Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chair of OpenStack Technical Committee, OpenStack Foundation, Thierry Cores. Hello, everyone. So I've been handling coordination and release management for the OpenStack project for the past, the past three years. And I'm uh, an elected member of the technical committee. And I would like to uh, have this panel so that you can meet the members of the technical committee. The technical committee is in charge of the technical direction of the, the project. And so please welcome on stage the members of the technical committee. Maybe. I have a mic. It doesn't work. So that's 12, right? No, 11 members plus me. Great. Uh, yeah, we're, no, we're mixing, uh, Use the mic, dude. Why, Thierry, we're missing two members. Two members. OK, so could you start by introducing yourself, uh, uh, everyone? I have to introduce everyone? No, you have to introduce yourself Thank and God. then pass the mic. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so uh, my name is Monty Taylor. Um, I am a member of the TC. Um, <laughs> gosh, I don't know what else to say in this context. Uh, I, used to, I used to run some various projects in OpenStack, but I don't actually do that anymore. So now I'm just sort of dead weight. Um, <laughs> but I am, I'm, also on the, I'm also on the board. Uh, which makes me even more dead weight, I guess. This is going to go bad uh, really quick. <laughs> uh, and, and I guess I've been requested to introduce the two missing members, uh, uh, Lifeless and Vish. Uh, they're not here. I'm uh, James Blair. Um, I work for the OpenStack Foundation, which um, is... I'm, I'm quite proud of that. I mean, I don't know what your feelings are on the subject, but I'm, I'm very happy about it. But anyway, um, I work for the OpenStack Foundation, which is actually largely incidental to what I'm about to say next. I'm the uh, technical lead for the infrastructure team for the OpenStack project. So um, I'm part of the team that, um, well, Monty said it this morning in his keynote because he's part of the team too. Uh, so anyway, uh, I've uh, been working on the project for a couple years now, and I've always had a project-wide uh, view and scope to my work, uh, which is why I decided to run for the TC recently. So. Hi, I'm Michael Still. I work for Rackspace in Australia. Uh, I'm a Nova and Oslo core reviewer. I've been on the TC for about six months now. This is my second term. Uh, I think that's all you really need to know for now. I got two mics at once. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ann Gentle. I coordinate the documentation for OpenStack, and I work at Rackspace. Um, completely all docs, all the time. And um, I just got elected to a one-year position on the technical committee, so I love users. That's kind of my role here, and uh, I guess I get to be the token woman, too, right? So <laughs> happy to be here. Uh, I'm Sean Daig. I work at IBM. Um, I'm also the OpenStack QA program project lead. Um, and uh, you'll see me a lot also in the dev stack communities and, and doing some Nova things from time to time. Um, and uh, just got elected for one year term, new, new to the group. Hi, I'm Mark McLaughlin, and I work for Red Hat. Um, I work on the Nova and Oslo projects. Um, kind of like Jim, I, I try to have a cross project focus as well. Um, yeah, that's me. Oh, I'm also on the board of directors with Monty. My name is Russell Bryant. I'm the uh, PTL for the OpenStack Compute Project, or uh, NOVA. Um, it's my third term on the TC. Um, since I work on NOVA, I'm very interested in, in cross-project issues since NOVA interacts with so many other projects. But even beyond, um, beyond NOVA and the existing projects, I'm also very interested in the future of, of OpenStack and, and, the, and the growth that, uh, that we've seen and that we're going to see in the, in the Near future. And my name is John Griffith. I am the PTO for the block storage project, Cinder. Um, I work for a company called Solidfire. Um, my main 
focus is, of course, Cinder. Um, and I try and also do quite a bit of work with drivers and vendors and, and stuff like that and helping them out. So. Um, my name is Mark McLean. I work for DreamHost. And I'm the technical lead for the, new, for the networking project, Neutron. So. And my name is Doug Hellman. I'm the PTL for the Oslo project. And I was on the team that created the Salometer project as well. And so, I work at DreamHost as, as well. So I was uh, mentioned before, my name is Thierry Carrez, and I'm handling the release management for the project. And this should be a very open session. So we'll, ha we'll have mics in the audience, and you will be able to ask questions to the, to the members of the technical committee during, uh, during this session. Uh, there is some history behind the technical committee. It's one of the three bodies we have for, uh, for our uh, proje project governance. There is the board of directors, there is the user committee, and there is the technical committee, which is elected by the contributors of the project uh, to, to set the technical direction for the project. We are in charge of uh, all the technical issues, uh, all, the, all the technical decisions that have to be made at, at the top level of OpenStack. And it used to be uh, the project policy board, which was, which was the first instance we had, and one of the the, the things we changed is when, would the, when the foundation was established, we set up the technical committee as one of the pillars of our governance, and it's elected members uh, representing the contributors of the project that are um, forming the, the technical committee. How would you describe the role of the technical committee? You can, anyone can take the question. <laughs> it's inspiring. Okay, I'll give it a shot then. Um, I really liked your description of uh, the, the technical committee being one of the pillars of our governance. Um, so a lot of people, when they look at OpenStack's governance, they look immediately to the, the board of directors as being, I guess, the top level you know, governance structure, um, our top level body within our governance. But in fact, I think most of us see us as kind of peers in our governance structure. So the technical committee is really responsible for um, the technical governance of the project. So, you know, what new projects will be included in, in the releases, you know, any cross-project policy issues we need to resolve. Um, and we're really trying to, you know, work with the board of directors um, when, when that's needed. Uh, yeah, I, I think actually uh, the, um, some of the, the when, I, when I tell people who don't really know a lot about OpenStack, oh, I'm on the board of directors and I'm on the technical committee, it makes it sound like it's a committee of the board of directors, which it's, it's, it's just really not. Um, it's not that, that this is sort of a subcommittee or something like that, it's its own thing. And, and in that way, I think what Mark said is, is right on, that, that a, lot of, a lot of what we're here for is sort of pro cross-project um, uh, po like policy that in, in terms of a technical thing, which is the project policy board possibly a slightly better name indicating what the group of people does, although it was sort of a weird acronym and nobody really, I don't know, saying I'm on the PPB didn't really sound all that great, especially when Thierry said it. It's, it's worth noting that um, even in the OpenStack Foundation bylaws, the technical committee is, it's established there and it's actually given, um, its remit is in the bylaws and it's actually given uh, very clear, very wide-ranging authority over technical matters for the project. So when we started the project, it, um, we made it very clear that this is going to be a technical meritocracy. We want um, people who are actively participating in the project to be able to have a huge voice in the direction of the project. And so the technical committee is the, the continuation of that idea. And I think it's extremely important that an, an open source project would uh, get controlled by its contributors rather than by like people coming from elsewhere because there is always the risk that the contributors will take the project somewhere else if they are not happy with the governance of the project and that's one of the major drivers behind the evolution we had with the with the, the representation of those contributors is to make sure that uh, the contributors of a single project make the decisions on, a, on, on one project and then we are here to solve the rest of the technical issues, like cross project issues, inclusion of new uh, new project within within the scope of what we uh, concentrate on and focus on, and so it's uh, it's re it's really important that the technical committee is the elected meritocracy of the project, and that's it's separate from the corporate influence or the sponsoring of the, of the foundation itself. So we went through a, a number of changes during the Havana cycle, an import, important set of changes uh, to the technical committee 
over the Havana cycle. One of them was to uh, have this notion of integrated projects that is separate from the core uh, projects. So the board defines what the core projects are and which are, which project are are allowed to use the OpenStack trademarks because that's what one of the board of directors uh, duties to to protect the trademark. And but the body of contributors is actually investing in in new directions. And what ended up being interesting is to separate the concepts of of uh, the projects that the community works on from the project that the board thinks must bear the OpenStack trademark. And so we introduced the, the concept of integrated projects, which is just the set of projects that we actually release all together every, every six months. But then it was not enough. And we introduced the concept of programs, which is everything that's important for the project and that the contributors work on and that we want to recognize as part of OpenStack from, uh, from, from a contributor's perspective. And so we introduced the concept of programs. So we have a QA program, we have a documentation program, and their leaders are well represented here. Uh, and infrastructure, uh, development infrastructure, release management, those are tasks that are essential to the success of the OpenStack um, projects in general. And we wanted to recognize that through the, through the programs. And the last change we went through were, uh, was changing the election model. So we had the PTLs for the main projects had a, a reserved seat at the technical committee and that did not scale so well, especially with the new programs approach. So we have like 20 programs. So if we have like 20 members plus directly elected members, that would like raise the numbers to, um, to very high. So we made the decision to have all the members of the technical committee directly elected. And that's the first uh, fully directly elected uh, set of, of members. How would you, um, how would you, uh, uh, what was your, your feedback on those changes? Were there good ideas? It was that like, did, is, are there anything we need to change during the Ice House cycle? Mm. I'm pleased with the result. So I like the directed elect directly elected model, to be honest. Um, yeah, esp especially as someone who isn't a PTL. Um, PTL is already a big ask for a lot of people, right? It's a lot of work, especially for the bigger projects. And some of those PTLs don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time on technical governance outside their project as well. So the assumption that they would want to was, I, was, I thought, a little bit weird. So I, I prefer this model, to be honest. And you know, if you're the PTL of a big project and you're interested, you're probably going to get elected anyway. So I think it's a move in the right direction. So Let I, me add something a little less self-serving. Um, I'm. Even excluding myself, I'm very happy with this group of people that's up here. I think we've actually got a great representation from people who have a long history of caring about the project as a whole, which, uh, and, and I'm quite certain that all of these people will be um, deeply involved and useful and productive in the technical committee, which I think is exactly the, the sort of thing that we were going for as a community when we decided to make that change. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, um, I, I think that the new model and the election model actually worked out really well. Um, in, in, and I, I have to kind of disagree with the, the comment about if a PTL wanted to be TC, he would be most likely elected. Um, I, I think that what we actually ended up with was a really good diversity across the entire OpenStack community of some of the most active contributors and members, um, not only in terms of code contributions, but in terms of reviews, evangelism, uh, help with infrastructure, um, everything across the board. Um, I, I think it really worked out extremely well. So. And I think that the um, addition of like a program lead really helped as far as documentation is concerned. We had just a really big growth period in the Havana release. We were able to release at the same time as code. We haven't done that before. And I do feel like a mission statement kind of gels people together, helps people understand we're all in this together. Um, so I really think the program technical lead was a huge help. I'd like to see translation as the next program. So hint, hint. Um, yeah. Um, but um, I think, yeah, so that's all I was going to say is that I think the addition of a program technical lead really helped raise up the, the layers that cross projects. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And for me, the, the big thing about programs, the big change that programs has been about is recognizing that actually the most important thing is the groups of people working on the project. So it's not just about specific code repositories, it's about the groups of people and, and what they're collaborating on together and what their, their kind of common mission is. Um, so yeah, we really love the programs concept. And it was Monty's idea. Woohoo! Hey, I had a, oh wait, I had a good idea. That's exciting. <laughs> we should we should take uh, we should take note of that more often. Um, no, I'm I'm actually really pleased with how that worked out, and, and I hadn't really thought about it in in, in this particular context until uh, Thierry's introduction, um, uh, when when we put it sort of opposite the the board and, and the board's stuff and all the core and what's what's core and what's integrated and everything. Um, that the, the programs really wind up describing the set of things that are that are part of the technical project. Like you, as part of a program, you're you're part of who we are as a as a technical community, and what we're doing in general. Without it being about the 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 a, a definition of the product output of the of the, of the project. And I think that's a that's a really important. Uh, I think it's a really important distinction um, that we've been able to capture without getting too without getting too legalistic uh, about it, um, which I think is pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, I've that and uh, I'd like to echo everybody else. I think we got a great board of people. And, and the one thing also that I noticed, uh, so we have we have a whole bunch of like a whole bunch of arguments around the board of directors about uh, company affiliation and and you know we want to make sure that you know the the big companies don't squash the little companies or whatever. Um, and we have no more than two representatives of any external. Uh, company on on the TC, um, and a it doesn't matter uh, because I don't think any of us are representing a particular company in in our views here. But at the same time, I think it's really interesting to see that the that sort of naturally we kind of have this this spread across small companies and big companies and the foundation and uh, and, and representatives sort of across that board. And I think that 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 we didn't have to dictate that that should happen. It just kind of did, which is great. And the real sign that that has happened is when Monty said there's no more than two, I think all of us looked up and down and tried to count quickly what the, our affiliations are because none of us think about each other's affiliations. We really are here because we care about the OpenStack project and it, our affiliation is very much secondary. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really great. Yeah, and and like, like Jim said, the, the group we have is really caring about the project first and, and not really uh, pushing any personal agenda. We are like probably we probably agree on most things now, and those are very uh, well-known and consensual uh, candidates for, uh, for the TC. Yeah, and from one personal note, as a contributor to a recently integrated project, I'm glad that the uh, size constraint of the technical committee didn't lead to that not happening. Uh, so changing the, the formulation of the technical committee allows the whole community to grow and uh, bring in additional projects in the scope of the project. Yeah, and I think just adding to that, um, one of the things that becomes important as OpenStack grows, the number of integrated projects, which is going to happen over time, is that it's, it's having a viewpoint that's the collection of the whole um, strongly represented within the TC. Because um, you, know, you can sort of manage the complexity ad hoc when we were at five or seven projects. But as we get up there, seeing, seeing across the whole is actually really important. Yeah. I also think that the, the move to directly elected um, means that everybody here made the active choice that it's a it's a duty that they wanted to that, they, that this duty is a duty they want to take on, which I think m potentially at least in my brain means that we can we can ask more of this set of people than potentially in the past. Um, you know, when we, when we look at things like, you know, projects up for there are more things we do other than just accept projects or not in theory, um, but but in looking at that, thinking about the the amount of technical uh, sort of oversight or, or sort of us looking at architecture of, of things that are coming in and actually like actually digging in a little bit and be like hey so that's an interesting choice you made there why are you making is that really a thing that we want as a as a party and I think that that up until now there's been a little bit of like there's like thinking of like oh gosh do we does and does the TC really have time well we all chose this so like I think that the idea of oh well it's that's too much to ask that we dig that far in is I don't, I don't think we've. I don't think we can hide behind that at all at this point. So it is the technical committee. Yeah, it kind of is. I, I think that's a really interesting idea too. So, Monty, what do you think about providing more mentoring to recently 
incubator project. So the moment we say, yay, you've met the bar, come back in six months and we'll tell you if we like you or not. Maybe we should be more active at I, saying, hey, you know, and we'll be involved in helping you get there. I, I honestly think that's a, that's a uh, and I, I don't exactly know what, what how that works, but I totally think because we get to things where I remember in the in the in the Trove graduation uh, discussion recently, we're like, oh hey, and you didn't do this, and and Bass Knight was like, oh, but you completely didn't ask me to do that, and I'm, and we're like, you're right, we actually did not act, like that's I I get your point of view, and that should be we should we should be asking things, we should be looking into those things at that level of detail before before it's up for graduation review. There should be, there should be some sort of, wow, that's, a, that's interesting the way you're doing that. Let's talk. Let's, let's see what, what a plan can be there. And I think yeah, actually, I really like this idea of mentoring other projects. And I, think, and I think we should even be looking at trying to do some of it even before a project is incubated and sort of trying to approach that, that graduation point. I think some of that has to happen even sooner. So I think as a group, we should all be looking out for projects as they're starting to pop up and they're like in their infancy because you know, the earlier we, we can kind of redirect them, the, the, the cheaper that, that redirection is as opposed to after they've done nine months of development or something. So that's something that, that I try to do. You know, I look out for some of the projects and, and like um, one in the last few weeks that, I, that, I, that I'm, I'm personally starting to spend some time on um, is the Solemn project. So that one came up and I, you know, I have some interest in that. So I'm trying to pay some close attention and, and look at the decisions they're making early. And I think, I think we should all be doing that and looking out for projects that uh, kind of strike struck our interest that we can help mentor as early as possible. Yeah, especially because kind of the point of OpenStack is a consistency of approach, right? So as people who've been there and done that a little bit, you know, we have some skills that we could help people with. That's, that's a good segue to my next uh, set of questions. I mean, you mentioned, uh, Doug mentioned that uh, accepting new programs is part of our, of our, uh, of our job. And I mentioned that the, this TC is mostly consensual and, and, and probably agrees on most matter. But I know that there are a few uh, points where we actually differ opinions. And one of them is the expansion of scope. Of, of OpenStack. So could you, could you give us uh, a quick overview of your position in uh, how many more projects we, we need to consider? How, what's the condition for them to be, to be considered? Uh, how do you regard the latest bunch of incubation requests that we recently received? Is it like too early? Is it too fast? Is it like should we just do uh, infrastructure as a service pieces? Should we do like or look at the state of the project rather than what the scope of the project actually is? Okay, M maybe I'll go first since I spent half an hour up here this morning talking about. <laughs> but uh, you know, my my point of view is pretty simple. It's um, we built this great place to collaborate. It's a really natural place for people to come together and start working on problems outside of core infrastructure problems. Um, we need to make sure. Uh, we encourage that, we, we appreciate that collaboration, so new projects come along under OpenStack and we encourage that, um, but we also need to make sure we're not losing fo focus, and I don't think we are losing focus on our core infrastructure, but we need to keep reassuring people of that and keep reassuring people that as we add new projects, we're actually doing this in a very careful, deliberate and measured way. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, the, one of the things that, that people are, they, they can, they continue, it's okay, it's partially our fault because we do consider this one project, right? It's, it's OpenStack as a thing, we are, we are one thing. Except that w when we get these new projects, we also tend to get new developers that are working on them. It's not like a new project means less developers working on them. Yeah, absolutely, I, I can assure yeah. you that, that Nova's not suffering from a lack of people contributing yeah. to it, despite, despite the massive growth and, and, um, that we've seen in the community overall, um, just as an example. With the exception of? <laughs> so, um, uh, so one thing I'd like to point out is, is Monty did uh, actually a lot of really good work early on to help shepherd the StackForge uh, idea into, into production. And so there is, there is a place in our infrastructure, in our community, for new projects to sort of self-incubate, to, to you know, participate uh, in, in this whole process without without having to be part of the one OpenStack project. And I think that's, that's really great. I think one of the things um, as a TC um, we need to do is to be very careful and very deliberate about how we grow the one OpenStack project. Um, I personally see no artificial bounds around that. I, my, my own personal opinion is I, I, 
I'm not interested in drawing a line at, at, at infrastructure as a service or anything else as a service or whatever. Um, I, I think we're actually doing a really good job of, of um, as, as Mark indicated this morning, uh, making that expansion in a sensible way. Um, but I think one of the things uh, that I that uh, that I intend to do uh, on the TC is as a, as a member of one of the cross-project teams, um, and I won't speak to any of the others, but there are some others here, is to help make sure that new projects don't put a drain on these cross-project resources, um, which doesn't necessarily mean saying no to new projects, but this gets back to the idea of um, shepherding projects through the process and mentoring them and things like that. So. Uh, as we expand OpenStack, we need to make sure that, and as we get new developers to projects in general, we need to make sure that we get new resources to these cross-project cross uh, efforts as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think I think we, that's um, like an even bigger view of a problem that we even face inside of individual projects as well. Sometimes, where we we have we have people from companies that have an interest in maybe some subset of the project, a, a vendor for perhaps their hardware or whatever the case may be, and um, but we have to have people investing in the co the common parts of the project and the core parts of it. But I think that applies. Uh, I think you made a really good point that that applies across. Uh, all of OpenStack and the common uh, the common stuff. So I think I think we could definitely we should do a better job of, of encouraging more of that, uh, yeah. of c contributing to this common common. Um, I also part. also think it's important that we encourage new projects to engage early. Right, we've had a couple of bad experiences in the past where things have popped up fully formed and they don't mesh well and there's a lot of technical debt. And I'd much rather be talking to them earlier so that we end up with something that the whole community is happy with. Um, and the other thing is the bar for incubation is, in my mind, reasonably low. We have integration later where we can say yes, and this is now a thing. Incubation is giving people a chance to become a thing. Uh, and, you know, providing assistance and mentoring and stuff like that along the way. And I, I don't think that projects have to integrate it within six months or within a single release. They can take longer than that if they need to. And if some projects never make it, then that's not terrible in my mind. We've learned something interesting along the way. Yeah, I agree. My, uh, my position is we should raise the bar of what it takes to get integrated because we should learn from our past mistakes, things we accepted that were not like tested as much as we wanted. And, and we should consider it normal if a project spends more than one cycle in incubation. It's really a learning process and, and we we have two points of control. We can trigger interest in that project, basically saying everyone, uh, this is the, a project that's worth looking into. It enters incubation, and then there is a set of challenges that this project has to raise, uh, has to um, to uh, tackle before before we would consider it integrated. And it should not be a, seen as a failure for the project if it takes like more one more than one cycle for them to to reach. I don't personally, I don't really expect Savannah to. Uh, to meet all the challenges that they will have to be fully integrated with, with OpenStack in six months because that would be like crazy activity to just meet everything we require for them. Uh, they are crazy Russians though. They are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that point about engaging early is really good. Um, don't assume just because you have an idea that no one else is thinking about that problem maybe in a different way or maybe they would want to help you out. So if you have some new project that you want to start up bring it up before you really get going, maybe you'll find some contributors on the list. And, and you know, one point to that I, I think is, is important to point out as well is there's a lot of people have thrown out words like control and let in and stuff like that. But um, from my viewpoint, I like to view the TC as more of um, some place to go for help uh, when you want to start a new project. Um, especially as time has gone by, even though we've started adding more projects and it's becoming more common, um, it's actually making it even more difficult uh, because there's so many moving parts. Um, so to be able to have somebody to go to and, and get help in terms of what actually already exists, what might be overlapping with what you're trying to do, things like that, I think it's really important. Uh, so, you know, involving the TC from that perspective, uh, you know, I, th I think is really, really important. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally attempt to speak for, for Lifeless, who isn't sitting here. Um, but <laughs> that's what you get for not coming. Um, you know, when he first joined OpenStack, I remember having a conversation with him about, about code reviews, and he was uh, a little bit frustrated that 
Um, he's like, code reviews are great, except that what they're not is they're not, they're not design reviews. Like, they're not, they're not architectural design oversight in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, and and, that's, and that, that's a little bit tricky, because we're, we're, we're so massive, there's so many people, there's so many moving parts, uh, to try and get like an, an overall sort of what's, what's going on, where should I sit? And we've seen this just right now with um, Trove and Savannah, and the, the conversation with Trove, Savannah, Heat, and I want to say there's like a fourth one that wanted to, that we really want to like say, hey, you guys should sit down and like maybe not duplicate some of the stuff that seems like it's meshing in there. And that's a place where I'm hoping that, that maybe we as a, as, as a group can, can again start to help, uh, you know, as John says, uh, start to help guide and shepherd some of those things. And, and I, I don't know that we necessarily want to get all the way into the business of being an architectural design review committee, but like, but to point at things and to, and to know what's going on so we can say, hey, you may not realize that you could, that, you know, Check it out. Trove is using heat internally now, or it's supposed to, to, to be spinning up these resources. So maybe you should too, and maybe y'all should um, in, uh, collaborate on what it means for an open stack service to use heat to get the resources it needs. I don't know, but like at least talk about it. You know, uh, absolutely. And and what you said there, point at things actually resonates a lot for. So we're talking a lot here about adding new projects, right? But there there are existing projects, and we've got this cross. Amongst those, we've got this cross-project scope, right? We, we can kind of see what's happening across the project. And we can actually point at things in existing projects and go, hey, you guys in your silos and these different projects need to really talk to each other and really need to figure things out and come to some, some consensus on something. So like a really simple example, which Michael pointed out the other day, is some projects use a library called SQL Alchemy Migrate for database migrations, and other projects use um, a, a, a library called Alembic. And this is something that just, it doesn't help the project when we have this kind of divergence. And the TC can really, you know, it really should take on the role now of identifying those kind of issues and not take on the role of trying to force an answer on people, but get people to come together and discuss things and come to some, some, some form of consensus. And the project can be completely successful outside of, of our group. I mean, if they apply for incubation, it's because they want to be integrated with the other projects. So they should be wanting to... Uh, include new, um, sure. I mean, uh, adopt all the technologies we've been using for, for the other project. I think it's time for us to take questions from the crowd, otherwise they will not have the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, and it's like a unique opportunity. It's really, really difficult to have all those people at the same place at the same time. And it's like uh, a danger for the project because <laughs> never knows what could happen. So if you want to ask questions to the technical committee, now is your uh, chance. Yeah, but the okay. Um, it's not completely technical, but uh, you're kind of representative of your communities. We are in China. There is no Asian on the podium. Um, what can you do to actually try to improve the situation? So I, I think that as far as improving the situation, as you put it, I, I think what it actually is is it comes down to who's actually contributed and who wants the job, right? So if it just so happens that there isn't somebody from the region that you're interested in um, that isn't on the technical committee, it's most likely because there isn't somebody from the region that, um, that wants to be on the technical committee. Um, I, I think that's really what it yeah. comes down to. Uh, that's the nice thing about an open election uh, across the board for the entire for the entire. Yeah. committee, um, it has nothing to do with, with regions or affiliations or anything else. It's all based on, on the community. It's a community vote. Yeah. You've also got to be in it to win it, right? I think there was some data released earlier this week that said Beijing is the top contributor city now at this point. I think it was Beijing. Yeah. Um, but n nobody from there ran, right? So we should certainly be encouraging people we think are strong technical con contributors to you know, grow in the project and run. But that takes time. And I think a lot of these people are relatively new to the project. Yeah. So we'll get there. So uh, my perspective on this, and it's interesting, Daniel is the guy who asked this question. We used to work together on the GNOME project, and we, we faced the, this issue there too. Um, you know, We've got to face the fact that this is an English-speaking project. If you, if you don't speak English, it is very, very difficult to contribute to the project. And also, you know, we have a similar shared culture here in terms of, you know, our understanding of a meritocracy, our understanding of, you know, 
being able to step forward and, and state your opinions loudly and, and really kind of demand people listen to you. And that's not a culture shared by everyone. Um, so it's, you know, I've, we've seen this in open source projects before. Um, we like to talk about, you know, in, in my keynote this morning, I had a bullet point up there about diversity. But when I said it out loud, I had to talk about our diversity of interests. We don't have a massive amount of diversity. For example, Anne is the only woman up here. Um, and I think it's a goal that we should all, in the project, not just on the TC, but we should all encourage. It's not easy, though. Um, but it's, it's really recognizing where contributors um, are, you know, maybe not naturally um, going to grow and to be the leaders that, that they could be and, and mentoring them and, you know, just being understanding of people who may, might face difficulties that not all of us face. It's yeah, we not, also have, the, I mean, we've got four, we only have four people not from the U.S. time zones that, the, on, on the thing. We've got, we've got a, a person from Australia, a person from New Zealand who isn't here, uh, uh, you know, an Irishman and a, and a, and a French person. Um, and and that, I don't know where he is. Uh, but but uh, we also have sort of a very American-centric, uh, uh, like our, our meetings are, are, are pretty focused on American uh, time zones. Um, and I, I think this is a thing that we should we should probably honestly uh, attack a little bit a little bit stronger because we we do have a whole bunch of, of folks in in Beijing. We've got a whole bunch of folks in. Yeah, we're getting more and more in Australia. Um, you know, in India, we've got a bunch of folks in like, and it's really right. But it's not just cultural. I mean, it, yeah. I, I see your point with the with the cultural and the fact that we we are like placing meetings at the wrong times. It's also that every region goes through a cycle where they first like contribute tactical features, things that are in, of, of interest for themselves, and then. The, the, that population matures and starts contributing strategic contributions, and and that's what gets you here. That's uh, when you care about the project, you prove that you care about the project, then you get here. So I think we will see more diversity coming when those people will start uh, moving from that mindset where they are fixing their problems to uh, the mindset where they are fixing everyone's problem. And I think we'll yeah. take another question. I just wanted to back up a tiny bit to something Mark said. Um, certainly. We, we assume English in this project, right? Uh, and I think as a project, we can get better at not doing that. So for example, you know, if we get a commit message from someone who's not a native English speaker, you know, we as a project should get better at not nitpicking their English grammar, but maybe just helping them instead. Or you know, maybe we can't expect English language documentation from a non-native speaker, so we should accept it in their native language and run it through the translation cycle. That sort of thing. But you know, we're already talking about that stuff, so we're trying to improve. So maybe next question, you, you want to comment? No. Another question? Anyone? Hi. So I have a question from user's perspective. So is there any plan to release long-term support version uh, so that for enterprises both want to utilize OpenStack but do not want to have like major updates every six months, just like Ubuntu, Jenkins? So that's probably for me. <laughs> um, so we do releases every six months, but it's actually not releases. It's like uh, we cut branches every six months where we backport a number of fixes. And distributions can take that and package it and support it forever. I mean, if you want OpenStack LTS, you can go with Ubuntu LTS, and you would get the distribution supported version that will, that will uh, work for a given period of time. On the other hand, we have work on continuous uh, delivery of OpenStack, and I think that's where the future lies, because upgrades will always be painful, and the, 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 the framework will always be evolving. So uh, what those people should ask themselves at some point is, uh, am I making the right choice by sticking to a, a, an ancient version, and should I not uh, contemplate using continuous delivery to, uh, to actually solve that? So my, my answer would be, your distribution your preferred distribution might uh, just address that LTS need for you. Uh, there are several mem a number of distributions that have like a long-term focus. I mean, uh, Red Hat can probably have, yep. probably have so something. I, I totally agree on the perspective that we want to get to a future where users can find it easy to kind of track trunk to, to use continuous deployment to deploy OpenStack. Um, but just one thing you didn't point out there is we do actually maintain stable branches. We do have a team that actually maintains a stable branch for six months after the release. So it's not quite the length, uh, the, the life cycle of an LTS. Um, so, but that, that six months period is really just um, 
decided upon based on the interests of the of the stable branch maintainers. So we're totally open to the, the possibilities of people who are interested in maintaining a stable branch for longer than six months to join the project and, and take on that role for themselves. Um, so, you know, like everything in OpenStack, OpenStack, there really is scope for people to come in and just, you know, help make it happen. Yeah, I, I think uh, also we, we get uh, feedback from gotten feedback at least from, from one person who likes to say this over and over again on our mailing list, that we should, we should learn more from, uh, from some of the other projects and not think that we're completely special and, 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 and a new thing. And I disagree with them most of the time um, because I like to think that we're a special snowflake. But, um, I mean, we look, at, we look at where Linus has gone with, uh, with the kernel um, and, you know, Linus basically said, I'm done. I'm not doing real releases anymore. Uh, that's the distro's jobs. Like that's that's somebody else's job. We're going to work on we're going to work on the kernel. We're going to release it when we release it, and we're going to release it all the time. Uh, we're going to release it when it's when it's ready, and we're going to do that. Um, and I I think we're probably not quite to the level of maturity of the Linux kernel just yet, um, but uh, we're we're getting there. Um, and I think that's a uh, that's a place that I would like to see us see us be at, so that we're not necessarily having to do extra things to enable the distros to do the thing that they do. You know, we're doing we're doing what we do. We're doing we're making sure that our software is good, and and then and then we're sort of letting that that separation exist at the level that it needs to 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 um to exist. And our policy is actually uh, uh, modeled on the kernel one because we have like those releases, and we do stable backports and point releases only on the previous stable version, which is what the kernel does. And I actually think that's why the triple O story is such an important part of this, because as a project, our development effort is going into you know, the master branch. And so for us to have a good story about how to actually run that as a project is a great thing. Yeah, but even on the release side, I mean, you know, not so much as an LTS perspective, but the reason people want to hang on old stable code is that upgrades are painful. And that is definitely in scope of they shouldn't be. They, this should be something that, like cross-project, we're really addressing the fact that, um, that upgrades are, are painless, that you can move forward um, very efficiently and not you know, hit issues along the way. And that is, has always been um, a place where we want to get as a project. Um, we're getting better at it. Um, but um, that's definitely, I mean, another approach. So we run out of time. I hope this uh, panel gave you a good insight of how we actually do things within the technical committee, which is very uh, discussion based. <laughs> and, and so please engage with separate members if, if you're interested in further uh, discussing with technical committee members. And thank you for everyone for, uh, for coming. And thank you for you. Uh, thank you for Listening for listening to us and bearing with us and my bad English. Thanks. Oh. Oh.